everybody. Thanks for being with us. Browns mania has hit full force. So let's talk to the Browns today. We'll begin with the head coach, Freddie Kitchens, who goes from running backs coach to offensive coordinator to head coach. I mean, does it hit him funny when people say you're the head coach of the Cleveland Browns? Um, in certain instances, yes. Um, but not uh, honestly, Jim, not really. It's, uh, it's one of those things you just, whatever your role is, you go to work and you try to do the best you can that day. Uh, and that's what that's what I've tried to do, um, and hopefully we've done enough, and uh, we'll continue to do that every day, and and we'll see where we're at. But um, you know, I couldn't be more pride, have more pride in yeah. being the head coach right. of the Cleveland Browns because uh, you know I, it wasn't lip service when I said that you know this is this is kind of my type area and this is my type town, and uh, of course this is my type organization. I love the history and and everything behind the organization, and we just got to get it back there now. When you got here last year, and, and you joined the staff, and you, you joined the Browns organization, when did all of a sudden you say, well, this is my kind of town. I click here. Well, it literally was when I first got here, my wife and I were, were driving over uh, uh, to look at houses, and yeah. I saw the smokestacks, and there's a Goodyear Tire and Rubber <laughs> Company plant in right. Gaston, Alabama, my dad worked at. Um, it just reminded me the feel of the the people and everything around you uh, reminded me of my hometown, uh, and then of course the the passion that the fans create uh, is second to none, and reminds me a lot of the passion that the folks in Alabama have for football. When you are the quarterback at the University of Alabama, and you were the quarterback at the University of Alabama, what is that like? Well, it's uh, kind of like being the head coach at the Cleveland. I, Bears, I was know? thinking it was. Yeah, it's kind of um, like that. You know, it's really interesting that um, uh, it, it has a lot of similarities, and and uh, but you love the fact that there's so much passion with the fans. Um, you know, high expectations, but we put those on ourselves, right. and uh, you know, hopefully, we're moving in the right direction. When you took over the play calling, when you became the offensive coordinator, when all the changes were made last year, and now you're really you're dialing it up every Sunday. Um, what was it like your relationship as you watched Baker Mayfield, you know, start to really grow into that position? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. He kind of grew as the season went along. And that's what you want to see is you want to see the progression of a quarterback continue to go up. And, and sometimes you can't always see it in the results. It just so happened we saw it in his results as well. And, uh, you know, that's the – as a coach, uh, that's the most comforting thing to know that – uh, you have a hand, and, and I wasn't the only one, but uh, you have a hand in, in, in making a player's confidence rise and making their success level uh, rise. Uh, and that's what you try to do as a coach. I mean, you want to you want to gain confidence in a player, we'll teach him something he doesn't know and watch him have success with it. Uh -huh. And uh, then he'll come back for more. And what is it like as you watch him now as he goes into his second season? Does he push himself? Do you ever have to push him? I don't, I don't, someone like Baker with his competitive nature and his relentless uh, search for, to be good, um, you don't have to push that. And, and that's an advantage to coaching Baker. You don't have to push him being great. You can coach him. He allows you to coach him. Uh, he wants to be coached. And uh, as long as those things stay constant, uh, Baker's going to be fine. Taking a look at your offense now and what was added on March 12th yeah. when that trade was made and Odell Beckham Jr. joins the team. I mean, when you look at that, Coach, what are you looking at? You've got him, you've got Landry, you've got uh, Callaway, you've got Higgins, you've got Njoku, you've got Chubb, you've got Duke Johnson, at some point Kareem Hunt, you've got Baker Mayfield. Wow. wow. I mean, your eyes, might, it's like Christmas morning, isn't it? Yeah, there are a lot of great players, and uh, that's all they are right now is great players. They... Um, uh, I think each one of them to a man has never won a championship. And uh, if we can get everybody to buy into the fact that they're all together can accomplish more than any one. Two is one and one is none. And if we can get them to buy into that, uh, we will have something. But not until then. We'll just be a bunch of individual good players. And, uh, and, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So We've got to buy in. We've got it on the, uh, the thing board, when you yeah. pull through the parking lot you know, out of yourself and into the team. And if we can do that collectively, we'll be fine. All of the, uh, the not naysayers, but people that go, you know what, you got to remember now with all those guys, there's only one football. Yeah. 
but there is only one football and they just have to learn how to do you do you do they realize we have some may have to sacrifice stats for wins well ask Jarvis Landry his stats went down yes. in the second half of the season and I promise you he was happier than he was in the first half of the season uh, and that's the type of players we want and if they if they're not like that we're not going to get to where we want to go that's the, there's only one way and that's the way you do it. I've been around it, so I know what it looks like. And I know that there's no, uh, you know, worried about myself so much as worrying about the team. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll get there. December 23rd last year, the Bengals game <coughs> at home, the game that, you know, Baker came out and said, hey, come on, let's fill the stadium. And they did. Sure, right. I mean, they followed, you know. Um, he's like the Pied Piper right now. Right. Everybody's following. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That game, though, was amazing. I hadn't heard that stadium, and I've called every game in that stadium. I hadn't heard that stadium like that, having so much fun. But I looked on the field, and the football team was having fun, right. especially on offense. I mean, you were doing things. I mean, Landry was throwing the ball. Right. I mean, all the running backs were in the backfield. When you do play with fun, when, when guys are having fun, they really perform, don't they? Well, I think you have to empower uh, players to play freely and play confidently. And to do that, sometimes you have to put yourself in a position uh, to do things you normally wouldn't do, especially in the situation we were in last year when we were winning. And Coach Stallings uh, used to tell me all the time, the fun is in the winning. Yeah. And we were winning, and, and that's why we were having fun, and we believed we could win. Uh, but no two teams are the same. So when this team comes back in training camp and to finish up this spring and comes back in training camp, we're not going to pick up where we left off. It's a start over type thing. And uh, if we start over and, and do it the right way and, and do it collectively mm -hmm. together, uh, then we'll get back to that point again and not until then. Have you paid attention to all the expectations? Well, I know they're out there. Yeah. And, uh, I'm they're right fine. outside the window here. Yeah, I'm fine <laughs> with that. I'm fine with the expectations. Uh, but those expectations can't be... Uh, what we're focused on the focus that we have is our expectations on how we prepare and how we practice everybody else the same they're the only reason they're putting expectations on us is to watch us fall it's the same reason that when you drive by an accident on the highway you slow down yeah. it's the same thing people want to build you up so they can fall tear you down they want to build you up and they want to watch the crash that's the excitement for them because that sells clicks and papers, and I don't know if they even sell papers anymore, but it sells internet reports yeah, and, and uh, people on the Tweety stuff and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff that sells, right. all right? And I've said this before, uh, players chase stats and media chases controversy because both of them equal money. Yeah. And that's what, that's what it does. So we understand why they are building us up. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't played a game yet. And uh, until we do, there's nothing really to talk about from our perspective, now, do we enjoy the fact that, that people are talking about us and giving us some uh, attention? Mm -hmm. Sure, our fans, I'm very happy for our fans that they're starting to get noticed. Right. They're getting noticed as some of the best fans in the National Football League. Right. They're getting noticed that, that they potentially could have a good football team, but right now it's just potential. Hey, you're really ready for this, aren't you? I think so, but we'll find out. I yeah. mean, I've, uh, you know, the only thing I can do is the best that I can do. And, uh, but I promise you, you'll get that. Yeah. Uh, and hopefully that's enough. I'm pretty sure it will be. And we move on to the architect of the Browns' rebuild, General Manager John Dorsey, who always said he was going to wake up a sleeping giant, and he's done it. I think the fan base deserves this because this is the Cleveland Browns. To me, it's one of the marquee, iconic franchises um, in the National Football League. If you go back to find the importance of what football is, you can go back to the inception of the NFL. You know, of the original 11 teams, five of those 11 teams were from the state of Ohio. Football's kind of important here. Yeah. So what stage are we at right now? We're at the second year. You know, last year, what did we do? We, we finished third in the AFC North. That's not good enough. So what we did is, uh, after the season ended, we constructed a plan on, on our second year of this thing. We began to fill some holes that, that needed and add some... Uh, veteran leadership but at the end of the day um, when you have a young quarterback like Baker Mayfield you want to surround him with some offensive weapons and then I think we've helped on the defensive front four I think that'll help Miles Garrett make him a better player because now you have actually legitimate four pass rushers there you go. so I'm excited to see how this thing unfolds. Did it get accelerated a little bit 
when Baker Mayfield played so early and then played so well. Baker went in and boom. And he shows you what a competitive guy he is on the field. Now it's his second year. I think rookies make exponential strides in their second year. Mm -hmm. uh, the quarterback system is so hard to master. And, you know, Baker's the first one in the building every day, and he is beginning to understand and try to master, you know, complex defense, understand the terminology of this new offense. So, you know, he's working diligently at trying to improve himself, and I would like to see 20, 20% improvement uh, in year two. March 12th, you pull off the whopper. Uh, with the deal with the New York Giants and Odell Beckham Jr. comes to the Cleveland Browns. What was the moment like when you sealed that deal? Well, I think to me the more exciting moment was at 4.30 after Dave Gettleman and I had talked and I looked at the boys and I go, dang, we got a chance to get this, maybe get this thing done. Really? That was more exciting to me because after it was done, to me, it was anticlimactic because in my mind, it's, okay, let's move on to the next project. Yeah. I mean, that's the way you have to be in that moment. Expectations, high. Um, television networks, they, they know there's a, there's a fascination. There's a great story that's brewing here in Cleveland. You know what? It's all hype. I mean, to me, reality is... <laughs> it is hit, hype. You're right. It is hype. Yeah. My, reality, to me, is going to training camp. Reality is playing the game in the fall, reality are those guys within that locker room and watching them grow as a unit, watching them collectively as a group have the same goals, the same objectives, because one of the barriers as you go through the season is that adverse moment. How do teams react in adverse moments? And hopefully we're strong enough now that we can fight through that and still go achieve our goals for the season. Uh, Mike asks, what is your favorite Cleveland attraction since you moved here? That's a good question, Mike. Thank you. My wife and I went to see Hamilton down at the Playhouse District. Really? Okay. And I had never been down yeah. to the Playhouse District. Awesome. I'm just saying those Playhouses are as nice of any Playhouse I've ever been in the country. And I'm just going, Yeah. this is unbelievable. You were with Green Bay. You were a Packer. You were a player with Green Bay. Yes, sir. And then you kind of cut your teeth in the scouting department with Green Bay. Tradition, Lambeau Field, that uniform, the history of the Packers. Do you see the same here with the Browns? I will say the fan base in Cleveland for the Cleveland Browns are more passionate than the Green Bay Packer fans. Wow. And that means a lot. But there are a lot of similarities between the Green Bay Packers and the Cleveland Browns. There, there truly is yeah. because of those iconic years early on. Yeah. I'm so ecstatic to be here because this is the Cleveland. This is the Cleveland Browns. You can go back to Paul Brown. I mean, if it wasn't for Paul Brown, I probably wouldn't have a job because he basically evolved scouting. Did you love this part of it, or did you love being a player more? I love this part more. I love football in general. It goes back to the days when my father, he always used to say, you know, don't go get a job, but go get something that you truly love and you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. I love the game of football. I don't come to work. I don't have a job. I come to work for the love of what, what we do. Hey, I want to thank you so much. It's been great having you in our little glass house here. It's my honor. Hopefully I <laughs> sat in well like Deke would sit here and talk to you. Hopefully I did as good a job did a as nice Deke. Job. I'll, we'll, we'll show the tape to Doug. Oh, yeah, yeah, please do. <laughs> we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> There you have it, Browns head coach Freddie Kitchens and general manager John Dorsey. Big expectations for the Browns this season, and those two guys will drive the bus. Thanks for joining us again.